Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up. Good Monday morning. Welcome to Run It Back. We are live in studio in a rainy and gross LA. We didn't sign up for that. Yeah, it's piping hot. Yeah, we all left our cold places to come here. Hello. Um, yes, Stadium Insider Sham Sharania. My name's Michelle. Chandler Parsons, Lou Williams on the end there. And Chandler, you've been in Orlando the last several days in a golf tournament <laughs> that was go. being, the scores were being kept. Yes. Here we go. Um, how did you do? Well, it says here I finished 39th <laughs> out of 48. Thanks, Rasmus. But you can see my sweater game was strong here in these oh, videos see. coming up. Oh, that's a The nice fits were on point. Yeah, Every, everything yeah. else was I thought different. you looked good, play good. That's nope. not the case in golf. Uh, yeah, a little like a, but no, it's very fun. I was I was able to go to Orlando, which is where I'm from. Style. Got the teeth. Did you beat guys, anybody so like, important? Like any names we might know? So I beat uh, Charles Woodson, Larry the Cable guy, Larry Vince, the Car cable Vince Carter. Guy. What up? <laughs> uh, well, word is Vince Carter didn't finish all four all rounds, did he? No. Okay, I don't so think you did so. beat him then. But I did beat him. Okay, this is not my fault. He couldn't finish. <laughs> I will say, walking four rounds in a row, that's my that's the first time for me, not giving excuses. <laughs> wow. It's different it's a different animal when you gotta walk that thing. You But yeah, I didn't play great. Is that what you want me to say? I didn't play great. But, but you know uh, what? Let me see this here you go, there oh, you go. That's fun. What's going on here? By the way, the big stick was working. Like, uh, look look at that hands. swing. Look at that swing. I mean, the form is on point. I don't know. The that result. There are a couple there. things that would change. It's funny. I've never really watched film of like the golf. You watch film of basketball. I've never really broke it down here. Let me see. Let me see that again. I think there was something wrong with the. All right. Maybe you're too tall for golf. Joe, where are all the fans you were telling us about? <laughs> it's so, dead. You're away. No, so when you tee off, so when you tee off, this is what's terrifying. I hit a big, like, cut. So when you tee off, there's Vince. There's Vince. <clears throat> when you tee off, they line up to your left, and there's, like, they build, like, stands behind you. This is at the green. This isn't at the tee. These are people's houses. And I hit a big cut. So if my ball happened to go straight, which it rarely does, I'm hitting someone in the head. Oh, that's probably why you got the 39th out of 48, maybe? He was looking my out for the people. My goal was to beat Courtney and to not finish last. So I'm two for two. <laughs> Did you, are you tied with Kevin from The Office? Kevin from The Office has some serious game. <laughs> the big guy can, the big guy turns, he's get it. What is this, a roast? That's no, I mean, look, we got some uh, here's, here's it is. roasting. It really Hold is. on, here it, it comes. Oh, is Knock it, it in. Knock it in. Put, put, put. There it is. I guess that's just an easy putt. That's just an easy putt. In fairness, though, and I think we all can agree with this. Chandler plays golf a lot, almost after every Chandler You would here. think, you would think. Chandler goes out and gambles and drinks on the golf course a lot. He doesn't play <laughs> good golf. And this well, is a real tournament where you're playing with the top woman in the world, which is the most terrifying part, because you're just trying to stay the hell out of their way oh, while they point. compete. And she has to watch that swing before she hits. <laughs> it couldn't fired. have been good for her, which is crazy, because the first school I played with finished dead last, <gasps> which is not that shocking. But then the second girl I played with, she was like tied for fifth. So I'm like, hey, don't let me go first. Like you go first and That's get yours out of the way. And then, yeah, but it didn't bother her. Did you have a favorite person that you met or played with? That girl, Marina Alex, she's a stud. She okay. played at uh, Vanderbilt and then Brian Erlacher. He's Really? He's How's the the hair looking? It looks good. Yeah. Because he does the he's he got like the a plugs. spokesperson for the plugs. He's still just like a big Beefcake, but yeah. he's actually really. Isn't that ball headed anymore? No, he's got legit Full hair. Full head of hair, Lou. Legit hair. He's awesome. You can dream. He's, <laughs> he's <laughs> awesome. It's awesome. And if you see the blue Gatorade, it's not Gatorade in there, right? Okay, Brian, you know so. what? I mean, don't try to excuse yourself. 39 I'm out of 48. Not bad. Imagine, <laughs> not imagine, what, I'll out get out of imagine what I'll get next year if I get invited back. If you get invited back. <laughs> Um, we've got some scoops. We actually have some basketball scoops to get to. Although I could roast Chandler for another 30 Seriously. minutes. But um, Zach Levine, I swear, Shams, your updates are not making me happy. What is going on? He's had a tough season. He missed mm -hmm. 17 games with a foot injury uh, in December, and then he finally got back in the lineup recently. Uh, played seven games, but now he will be out at least the next one to two weeks. He's got a, a sprained ankle. It's, it's worse than just a grade one. So he had a tough sprain. He played through it. Uh, last week, and the we've been talking about him as a player of interest for the Lakers. They have, yeah. they have had some interest in Zach Levine. The thing with Zach Levine that makes a deal tough, you know, as you look into the trade market, he's got three years and 140 million dollars left on his contract after this season. 
Um, and I think both sides, I think there's an understanding this could go into the summer. This could be something that plays out. That could be a summer transaction for Zach Levine. And when you look at this Bulls roster, how does this impact DeMar DeRozan? Is something that I'm curious about. He will be a free agent at the end of the season. And if there's not a Zach Levine trade, what do you do if you're the Bulls with DeMar DeRozan? If you have a guy that's on an expiring contract, do you look to trade him? Do you try to get value now? Um, or do you try to give him an extension? Do you try to you know, sign him in the offseason? But you run the risk of losing him for nothing, especially if you still have Zach Levine. And I think the Bulls have wanted to find a spot for Zach Levine and free up some money potentially for a guy like DeMar DeRozan, the players, coaches, they all value his leadership. Uh, but this is a team, this is something that could happen in the summer. It's kind of crazy. I feel like we're just going to be in a holding pattern. When I saw your tweet about the ink, I was like, oh, this is just going to extend what already seems like a long, drawn-out process. Um, he's averaging 25-4 and four over 25 games. He is a two-time All-Star, and we've been talking about this for a minute. Which, what would be the best landing spot for him? To me, I think it's getting to the point where it's Lakers or bust. I think, and it's never been a question about his talented, uh, his talent. I think he can score the ball. He's proven that in years. Like you said, he's an he's an all star, um, and the Lakers can use him. They can use his shot creating. They can use his scoring. They can use his shooting. And I do think they're going to end up with a Murray or him, but. Uh, I just don't know if they have enough juice now. I don't know. I feel like this is kind of stagnant. And again, this, the numbers you just said on his salary, do you want to pay a guy as the number one option? That salary is the, is a, is the number one guy. And he's not going to be the number one guy on the Lakers or most of the teams. He's going to be more of a two or three guy. So, like, do you want to give up that much, you know, money to a guy that's not going to be your best player? So, so is there, are there other <laughs> scenarios that we can be keeping our eye on as far as he's concerned? The, the Lakers are doing their due diligence. DeJounte Murray... Bruce Brown Jr., who just yeah. got traded to the Raptors. Tyus Jones, Terry Rozier. I'm told those are names to keep an eye on. The Lakers and Hawks did have some pretty extensive conversations about a DeJounte Murray trade a couple of weeks ago. It was centered around D'Angelo Russell, uh, 2029 first round draft pick, and a pick swap, I'm told. The holdup was that Atlanta wanted to find a third team for D'Angelo Russell. He's got a player option for next season. They wanted to find a spot where they might be able to get an expiring contract back. I would expect the sides to circle back as we get closer to the February uh, trade deadline, um, but hmm. listen, D'Angelo Russell, the last yeah. five games, I think we need to give him credit, the way he's playing, 27 points a night, six assists per game, over f about five threes per game as well. He sh his splits are unbelievable, 56% from the field um, over the last five games. He's gotten a lot, uh, I think, of, of flack over the last month or so. He's been in and out of the starting lineup. He's back in the starting lineup now, and so He's, he's played at a really high level for the Lakers the last five games. Is that a don't trade me last minute plea? What is, what is no, he that, doing? No, that's actually going to backfire. Yeah. Usually when guys start playing yeah. really well at the, at the trade <laughs> deadline, it's like an audition. Like, see, I told you he can play. You, yeah. you, would you, would, do you want in? And so it's two things that happens at the trade deadline. Guys start playing really well or guys start playing really bad. Mm. And, well, well, three things, because you start seeing guys play that – probably weren't in the rotation, that is a red flag. If you start seeing guys' minutes pick up right before the trade deadline, you are being auditioned. Oh, no! <laughs> so with D'Angelo Russell playing well, this can backfire on him, and he probably can get himself traded by doing it. Yeah, other teams are seeing him, well, damn, he still can play. He still yeah. can do this at an elite level. We could, all right, now, all right, whatever. If he's going to play like this for us, let's, let's go ahead and do it. And you got DeJounte, two game winners in a row. This is going to be a very interesting trade deadline. Um, back to the Zach Levine of it all. Can he be a number two on a contending team? Quite possibly. I don't know what his options are, if that would be the scenario, right? Uh, only teams I would see is OKC. He could go to OKC and be the second best wow. player. Um, other than that, you look at Boston, Milwaukee, Philly, Minnesota, Denver. These guys already got their one and two punches, you know, so he's going to be a third option on contending teams. Now, could he find himself as a number two option? Sure, but I don't know if they're going to be a contender. And right he's away. the type of guy where he is talented enough where he can go and be a guy for a stretch. He can be that go-to guy. He can get the ball at the end of the game because he can go have these 40-point games and, and kind of erupt offensively, but... No, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think he, he's definitely not a one-off. Not for a contender. And, and yeah, for not mm. for a contender, and not at that salary. It's it's that's it's it's that's a lot of money to pay to a guy that's not your best player. That's not your franchise piece moving forward. You're not gonna have 40, 50 million coming off the bench. <laughs> yeah. Did, did we say OKC? Yeah, I know. Mm. That's what I thought. Is that gonna disrupt everything? Yeah, just because it's a contender. Ah. Uh, Strictly because. What about the Knicks? Are the Knicks in the running for anything? I know. I'm sure we'll, we'll I know, get, I'm like, we'll get to it later like in the show. Uh, <laughs> I, we can ask them now or we can tease it for later. Okay, let's tease it for later. Let's do it for later. Yeah, it's almost like if there's a rundown. Um, Trey Young, 
had a game on Saturday that he left early for concussion. What's the latest? Yeah, he's been di diagnosed with a concussion. How this works in the NBA, he's going to be in their protocol, in the concussion protocol for the next 48 hours, today, tomorrow. And he needs to show that he's got no symptoms. And they're going to continue to test him and see how he's doing over the next 48 hours, the next mm. 72 hours as well. He's going to be reevaluated by the team physician. He has to clear protocols in order to return to action. He's not playing tonight against the Kings. Most likely you would assume he's out Wednesday as well against wow. the Warriors. They're on a quick, they're on a road trip right now. They, they come out west. So they, they go back at home on Friday against the Mavericks. Maybe, you know, if he's feeling better as the week goes on, you see him there. But yeah, tough for Trey Young. He just got back in the lineup. He missed a game in Miami. He gets back in the lineup and now He's out with a concussion. He was just sick in Miami, yeah. and now he's got a concussion. Sick so. in Miami. Ah. You got a newborn baby, man. Anything's possible when you got a newborn in the house. <laughs> Exhausted. Let me ask you if that does anything. It's weird timing for him to have this with the DeJounte Murray trade deadline situation. Does it matter? Well, you see something interesting. I'm not, I, I, th I think the Hawks, you know, wanted Trey Young, DeJounte Murray. They wanted that com combination when they go trade for them. Those two guys haven't exactly, I think, panned out the way the Hawks wanted. And right. what you see when Trey Young's out of the lineup is DeJounte Murray plays really well, and he plays better with the ball in his hands when he's the lead guard, back-to-back -back game winners, <laughs> especially the one in Miami where he led that team. That, that Hawks team was down against Miami. He leads the comeback win, hits the game winner. So DeJounte Murray, when he is the lead ball handler, that's part of all this, right? Like, where could he end up? Is it a team like the Lakers? Um, is it a team like San Antonio? Is it a team, you know, which team can he go and be a lead point guard for and lead ball handler for? And I think that's the potential quest that we have here with Atlanta and interested teams. I mean, they're sitting in 10th, Chandler. What, what do you do? Do you make a move? Do you deal? I think they deal. I think Shams hit it on the head. I think th th this sounded good, putting Murray and putting Trey Young together, and it just didn't pan out like they thought it would. And, and the, the Hawks are an interesting team because I thought they were going to make that jump this year. They have a lot of players that a lot of teams could use. Like teams, The guys love Bogey. They love DeAndre Hunter. Jalen Johnson apparently is untouchable. That kid's turning into an absolute stud. They got solid bigs with Capella and Akungu. Akungu. Uh, so they have, they have the talent, but they don't have enough, and this isn't working to be a, con a championship contender. So, yeah, I think you can move Murray. I think you can add pieces. Stack up draft picks, do whatever you have to, because this combo, as good as they are, they're not they're not the best together, and it hasn't really worked out. So I would, well, it's not too late. They're not going anywhere this year. They're not going to win this year. Ship out Dejounte Murray, let him go somewhere else, get stack up assets, picks, and then go from there. Because you have a lot of pieces on this team where there's not like they're going to trade Murray and then be tanking. They, they have the talent. Who do you want to see make a big? step up no matter what happens with this team playoff push I think not. they got a few guys that have the opportunity to do it you know you got Bogdan Bogdanovich in that six man role that's going to play well for you that was a starter at one point I'm not sure when DeAndre Hunter is going to come back from injury he can be a guy that gives him a big push but like we just mentioned Jalen Johnson has come out of his shell and he's playing great basketball for this team so he could be a great third option uh, and, and be a pick and roll punch for for DeJounte Murray and Trey Young or whoever's going to be on that team after that February deadline but you know they they have a few options of guys that can really help them make that push if they're going to do it. And they brought in DeJounte Murray and Trey Young. I, I think he's going to be best when he's not the best player on the team. But I think Trey Young still thinks he's the best player on this team. So I didn't I mean, know. he is, though. Yeah, but you know what I mean? They For have sure. to bring in. If they, if they, they it need to be a mentality. And it's, it's got to be an absolute star that's not like I think he's thinking this is still his team. This is an equal, which it is most nights. But it's got to be someone else because this didn't pan out. I will say, when you look at the Lakers targets, so, right? when you think about DeJounte Murray, you think about Bruce Brown. Uh, Tyus Jones, Terry Rozier, they had those conversations with the Hawks. D'Angelo Russell, Jalen Huchifino, first round pick, a swap hmm. from what I was told, and the hold up being Atlanta trying to find a third team. So when you think about those targets, who do you guys think is, is the best fit for this Lakers team? I, I don't hate DeJounte Murray. I, just, I don't hate Zach Levine either. I think Zach Levine makes more sense basketball-wise because I like him being able to create. I love his shooting outside of with, with LeBron and AD. But that salary, that salary, it's a lot, right? man. It's a lot for a team that I don't know if he's enough to put them, okay, to compete with the, the, the Nuggets and the Clippers and these teams in the playoffs and the Thunder. Um, so I don't know. And those other names you said, I don't really love those either. So I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. Oh, this is going to be a fun deadline. A fun deadline indeed. Let's take like a trip. Terry Rozier. Yeah, I, I know. He's, he's going to help the Completely Lakers. forgot. Yeah, and like, then boom. Whatever they do, they shouldn't bring in anybody that's going to be ball dominant. LeBron James is the point guard. We've and seen everybody it. we just named. Yeah, we've, yeah. seen, it. we've yeah. seen it with Schroeder. Yeah. We've seen it with D'Angelo Russell. 
LeBron James is going to be the point guard. So if you're going to bring somebody in, bring a Zach Levine in, somebody that can give you 20, 25 points and play off yeah. the basketball. I like Levine the best out of all those names. And there it is. It's established. Let everyone know, Shams. Thank you. <laughs> uh, around the league, we shall we go. And there's some moments, uh, starting with an Anthony Edwards moment after Saturday's game. He expressed his frustration with the referees. It's hard to, man, with the calls that Shea gets. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard to shut him down. You can't touch him at any time of the game. So it's super hard to beat that team. It's a good team, especially when you get calls like that. So it's hard. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, is he? Is he? Just so you know, SGA, who he's talking about, is third in the NBA in free throw attempts per game. Is he right to be frustrated? Well, you, yeah, I mean, numbers don't lie. He's third, but... Well, one, Shea is from the school of Lou, you know, so early, <laughs> <laughs> so early on in, in Shea's career, that was, that was a point of emphasis that we worked on with him and, and me and Pat Bev, just getting to your spots, learning how to cheat the game, huh. using your pump fakes and all of that. And also, you got you to gotta look at the style of play. Listen, if you're if you're not gonna if you're not a physical guard and you're more of a finesse guard, you're not gonna shoot free throws. You know, Ant Man is one of those guys. He's gonna rely on his jump shooting, or he's just gonna jump clean over you and finish at the rim. He doesn't play through a lot of contact because that's the style of play that he has. And so I think this is a this is a little mis yeah, it's a it's a little misleading. But you know, I I just. I want, I want him to just continue to hoop, not worry about that, not worry about SGA, because I think their style of play is so much different. And it's smart on Shea's point, because he's a great free throw shooter. He's getting to the line. He's stopping the flow of the game. And this has happened a lot with, remember James Harden back in the day? Guys were getting pissed. And actually, the, so many complaints happened where they stopped giving him this whole rip through foul call. Um, but when you watch these workouts now, you watch guys like Chris Brickley, Drew, Han Drew Hanlon, these trainers, they teach you basically how to create contact, like Lou was saying, how to cheat the game, how to initiate it and then get the calls. That's part of the, uh, the evolution of the game and evolution of basketball. And on the flip side, you have to be taught how to defend without these moves working. So it, it works both ways, and I, I do love it. Is there a beef here? Is there a rivalry? No, I don't think so. But these are two of the Could most. I hope so. Could yeah, be exactly. I think I it would be great, so. I, and I, I love want it. one. And I think these are two of the best young guards, both on great teams this season. So yeah, I hope there's a rivalry here because these two guys are awesome. But they're both stars. I mean, we always talk about stars get calls, maybe that other guys don't. But we're, these are two stars. Yeah. If I'm it's Anthony Edwards, I'm trying to do the same thing. I'm watching film on That's him, it. and I'm watching how is he getting to the line so much more than me? How is he creating this contact? Because they have similar games, you know, on the perimeter. Can you imagine if Ant Edwards stars? Play Playing with his back to the basket, he's gonna mm -hmm. be a free throw machine. Nobody's gonna be able to stop him. He's so big and, and can play physical, <laughs> even though that's not how he likes to play his game. But if he puts pressure on the man that's guarding him out of that post, out of the mid post, his his free throws will go up at least four to six attempts. Well, I you may not want there to be a rivalry, but I think some of us do, and it could be brewing. Um, there was a post from SGA day after they played Minnesota. Um, just yeah, the caption they talk about me for my post game, not my post game. Where did it go? That's not him. That's no, not SGA. God. Uh, no, SGA had a post, and it was like one of it. First of all, he dresses impeccably, and he has all those like model shots, and yeah. it sort of looked like one of those. Hey. But it feels like something brewing. I, that's not a bad thing. No, and I don't think. I think again, this is the world we live in with social media, and there's an outlet for everybody to kind of get this banter going. <laughs> but these guys, they're, they're, there's not a rivalry. Shea there. got. He has. He has a great. Uh, game when it comes to to <laughs> labeling his pictures. I don't think he this, really does. I, I honestly think this has nothing to do with Anthony Edwards at no. all. But if it did, this is this is interesting. And I like it. If it does. I like it too. Yeah. I like I'm it. not from Ireland, but I'm Dublin or something. Yeah. Oh, Wait, wait is, he is he doing that? This is this is the norm for SGA. So maybe Who a lot of that was that Who's you, doing Lou? the cat? No, that, 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 that's, 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 that's the school I, of Lou too. I think, no, I think that's the, the school of Drake. I think that's, yeah. uh, that's that Toronto connection. Who also connection. had a video that went weird over the weekend. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> um, we're going to take a quick break right now. When we come back, we will be joined by actor and comedian Paul Shear. When Run It Back returns. Run it up. <laughs> run it back, yeah. Run it up. Run it back, yeah, yeah. Oh, you might know our next guest from The League and the show Black Monday. He also hosts a very popular podcast, How Did This Get Made? It's Paul Shear joining us from the sexiest room we've ever had on the show for sure. What's up, Paul? Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. I am so excited to be here because for a little bit yesterday, 
as a Clippers fan, Uh-oh. I thought I was going to have to come in here with my head <laughs> hung low uh, for ba- basically for about three quarters and a half. Oh, dear. I felt like I would have to come in here and make a lot of excuses. But I am very happy to be here after that triumphant comeback yesterday. Yeah. Can we start there, by the way? Because you grew up in New York. Yes. Then you moved to L.A., but you mm-hmm. don't pick the Lakers. You pick the Clippers. Why? No, you can't. Yeah. You can't pick the Lakers. It's a bandwagon choice. <laughs> Uh, I came from New York, a huge Knicks fan, but my thought was, if I'm going to be here in L.A. for a bit, mm. I want to bring my kids to games, and I want them to have a team. And so I picked the Clippers. They were exciting at that point, and it was like a, it was a fun kind of new version of the Clippers. And, uh, yeah, I've been happy ever since. <laughs> and uh, one of those reasons why is from one of those guys right there on your desk, Lou Will. I mean, Whee! come on, one of the best. Oh. This hasn't been, as a Clippers fan, 2018, 2019, that season, this season are my two favorites in recent memory. That's pretty Thank good. You, Paul, I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, this is going to be a fun so, one. So, Paul, yeah. you grew up a Knicks fan. Yeah. Why not just stay a Knicks fan? That's tough. <laughs> because <laughs> if I stay a Knicks fan and live in L.A., I got to watch 4 o'clock games, and then what? Like, I get fair excited point. once a, a year when my team comes to town. Right. I can't do that. I can't do that to my kids. Now my kids actually have a team that can go to multiple games. Like, I never liked that kind of thing where it's like uh, you'd see somebody in New York and be like, well, we're, you know, we're Minnesota fans. Like, well, yeah, you're not Minnesota. <laughs> Come on. I, one, of the best parts about, one of the best parts about being a Clippers fan is that people yell at me all the time when I'm wearing my Clippers stuff here in Los Angeles uh, in previous seasons. So, you know, you got to it, it's part of the city. It's part of what you live for. Makes sense. It makes sense. Paul, I know you've been you've been you've been to a ton of Clipper games. I got to ask, what's what's your favorite to memory? Ooh. Oh man, there was a great game. I feel like two years ago, or yeah, like it was, a, it was a comeback against the Celtics, and it was the first time. I think the Clippers have this energy where the stadium it's in L.A. where everybody is coming into town, right? So whether it is New York or whether it is Boston or Sacramento, it always feels like somebody else's court sometimes. And um, mm-hmm. I remember like Pat Bev getting that crowd to be behind the Clippers on this comeback. Like we, we shut up a Boston crowd. And that to me was an amazing night just because it felt like the tide shifted. And from there forward, I feel like we've, we've kind of stayed a little bit as a Clipper stadium in that disgusting uh, crypto duck. <laughs> By the way, do you was the 42 that Lou dropped? Was that a big moment in the family? Did you guys Huge, celebrate? Huge. Yes. Yeah. I literally. Well, you, the reason why you're going to see some of this boudoir back here is because <laughs> I was running to go get my uh, my Lou Williams stuff. I have it in a closet, and I was just getting it out, and I was like, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. I was like going through everything real quick. Uh, so, yeah, no, I mean, that was huge. I mean, there's been so many great things. I mean, the, the comeback against Golden State, like amazing. Like so many great Clippers moments, and I feel like it's all kind of coming together right now, which is really exciting. Paul, besides Lou, who's your favorite <laughs> Clipper of all time? Oh, my gosh, of all time. Oof. You know, look, Lou, like, like I said, 2018, 2019 was huge for me. Um, I would say, like, Lou and Pat Bev, to me, <laughs> were the guys that I loved watching play. I just loved the energy. I felt like the toughest thing for you guys to do, at least from my vantage point, was like you guys carried that team. You carried everything about it. You created culture. And that to me is so important. Like I love the, you know, the the Blake Griffin years and everything <laughs> like that. But the, the the time when it was just you two that was really a special time, a special moment. Amazing. I you, love the internet. Yeah. You, you, you mentioned Blake. He's obviously now post-career and during his career, he's dabbling into comedy and stand-up, and he's legit funny. Oh, like, I, I've done shows funny. with Blake. Hey, that's I've what I was going to ask. What, what, yeah. what kind of stuff have you done, and what do you, do you actually think? Is, it, is, it, is he actually funny, or is he just funny because he's Blake Griffin? No, he's actually funny. The first time I did anything with Blake, it was like me, Blake, and DeAndre Jordan. We were doing a... Uh, a live read like we took the script of space jam and we put blake in it instead of michael jordan and then we all uh, cast all the characters around it and uh that was a blast and then blake has come on like improv shows that i've done at largo and and the thing is i think that you think like okay it's it's blake it's gonna be whatever but he actually is very funny so yeah and i think he cares about being funny like you know he's not like just doing it on a lark yeah i think i think 
people say someone's funny, but we have different levels for it. And he actually no, is funny no, he, 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 in the yeah, world, which I kind of love. Well, it's, I think it's tricky because you have like people like, you know, like, like Lou, like Lou, you know, you're you make music. Right. And I think it's hard when you, people know you as one thing and then you also do something else. And I feel like but you can do it. You can split the difference like you and Dame. And I feel like I don't think there's any other comedians hmm. in the NBA. Like, I think there are a lot of funny players, but no one else trying to do comedy mm. actively. Right. No, nah, I don't think so. No, <laughs> not at all. I don't all. think. No. no. Paul, I've, I played for both the Lakers and the Clippers. I know. So I've experienced firsthand the way that this city treats one jersey opposed to the yes. other. Even though I think the Lakers are so ingrained in the culture of Los Angeles, what do you think it takes for the Clippers to become that team in L.A.? You know, for me, I feel like you got to start with the kids, right? You have to have something to grow up into, and I feel like that's what's going on now. When the, when the Clippers and Bomber came in, he started uh, basically financing all these public parks, right, and putting up these right. Clippers uh, hoops. I feel like that's important. And the kids I know, like when Kawhi came to town and he gave those backpacks to every kid in public school, like I feel like that's the energy that you kind of need. LeBron will always be LeBron. And even though every Laker fan I talk to is like, LeBron's not a Laker. I don't there understand that mentality. Uh, but <laughs> and I love the And look, the Lakers, but you, the Lakers are like the Cal Dallas Cowboys. Like they are basketball. Like you can't you can't knock them down, but you can only expect to uh, compete and make it exciting. And I feel like that's what the Clippers have been trying to do. And, and I think it's working. I won't make any Cowboys jokes right now because it's too soon <laughs> for some. Um, it's painful. But it wasn't that long ago you got into a bit of a Twitter beef with Lakers fan Shannon Sharp, which is obviously oh, considered yeah. the Lord's work. Uh, where I'm uh, from, any regrets in that one? Never. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> how, how does only that even that go I back and it. forth? Like, that's a tough guy to get in a beef with. <laughs> It is. It is a tough guy. And it's like it's funny because like he likes to talk. He like you know, he likes to talk. And I feel like most of my fights on Twitter have been <laughs> basically around Clippers stuff. So uh, it's fun. I mean, because it doesn't mean anything either. And uh, yeah, I mean, maybe one day I'll go on Club Shay Shay. Oh, and God. I'll do a three and a half hour interview and yes. uh, break down all my beefs with everybody in the world. Are you going to attack every white comic that ever lived, Paul? <laughs> it's going to be the best three and a half hours ever. Uh, or they did it. They did a, 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 I don't know, I guess a poll not that long ago in the offseason yeah. talking about who drinks the most in arena. This actually shocked this. me because the Clippers not only drink the most, they also eat the most. And when I think of L.A., I don't think of eating. But are you shocked by that about your fans? I was because we share a stadium with the Lakers. Yeah, that's interesting. Are you telling me that they don't drink and eat as much as us? Because whenever I go to a Lakers game, people seem pretty drunk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm shocked by I that. Would th I'm surprised not like Detroit because we're just Milwaukee. getting wasted watching yeah. that team play. Yeah. Okay, that's. Too I don't. Far. I don't. I didn't know we had a, a culture of drinking. I didn't know you. I did like either. that you guys feel like that. That that's not the vibe I get when I played there. Learn that today. No, that I mean, that, my, I'd also argue too. It's like you're right. It's not like really a culture of drinking, and it's like. Everyone's driving to go also to that Staples point. Center. Like, it's like, right. you know, you got to come into it. Like, that's a very much a car city. I, the I cops don't like, should just I don't sit like there the... and have a field day. Yeah, leaving, just leaving. sit at the parking yeah. garage and wait. Good call. Yeah. Way to help the cops, Chandler. <laughs> yeah, Paul, <laughs> your Clippers are currently fourth in the West. I was yes. to PG, Kawhi Harden, they all been playing pretty well. Is, does this team have enough to win a championship mm. this season? I would never say anything that would jinx any opportunity in any way. I'm just enjoying the ride. That's but all yes. I want to do. But I'm enjoying the ride. Yes. Like, look, every team has a potential to do anything, really. Uh, but no, um, Not I think as a Clippers fan, like, I am frightened out of my mind, right? Oh, my God, this is fun. But when will something terrible happen? Like, I, I, I'm a Jets fan as well. And Aaron's like, everyone's like, you're excited about Aaron Rodgers? I'm like, no, I'm not. Because I know what's going to happen. Something terrible. And that happened when the first five plays of the, of the, of the first game. So, yeah. like, I, I am cautiously optimistic. I'm enjoying everything. And that's all I'm going to say. Like, I know that Shaq was, like, pushing PG to be like, if you want a championship, you got to say it. I'm like, no. Because the minute Chuck says that we're going to get a championship, we're going down. <laughs> so I got We got to keep our head low. Just keep on winning games and move forward. Well, well, listen, I actually like the Clippers coming out of the West this year. I just feel like they're, they're loaded with talent. And, and with that, they're opening their new arena next year. Yeah. Um, have, you, have you been able to see it? Have you been able to tour it? And how excited are you to not finally have a home of your own and not share an arena with the Lakers? 
I'm very excited. Uh, the into, uh, I always forget how to pronounce, but like the Intuit, Intuit Dome or Intuit, Intuit. Dome or Intuit. Intuit. Uh, Intuit Dome. Intuit. Yeah. Intuit. Uh, the Intuit Dome. I got my seats. I got my season tickets all locked up, and I'm excited that they're doing weird stuff. Like the wall is yes. amazing to me. It's basically all behind <laughs> one basket. Just fan. It's great you in can't theory. be another yeah. fan. Yeah, it's, it's great, great in theory. theory. Yeah, it's like, and I I think that. Like, it's fun to go to these places and just feel like, oh, we're going to try to do something different. And everything I've seen from Bomber, it seems like if you present him two nice options, he's like, yeah, yeah, we'll do them both. You know, <laughs> so I feel like that whole stadium is going to be pretty magical and exciting. And whenever you get to see a new stadium, it's always kind of cool. I just was in uh, Golden, you know, I just saw a Golden State game last year. And that stadium is beautiful. It chased the arena. Uh, it's great. You know, so I feel like it's exciting whenever you open up a new stadium and hopefully... They'll bring some more culture in there. The thing, And the thing I'm most excited about, as a Clippers fan, as an L.A. driver, is that apparently Bomber has made some agreement with the Department of Traffic in Los Angeles. So they're going to be opening up lanes to Inglewood. So what? four lanes Ooh. in and four lanes out. And they can be able to control all the stoplights so you don't have any traffic once you get off wow. the uh, that's highway. That, Sheesh. I was like... That's the like, I mean, that's really going to face on that new highway. First of all, <laughs> well, yeah, you know you're in LA when that's the most exciting thing you've ever heard, and you're, you're like, oh my yeah, God. Yeah, wow. Oh my God. And they gosh, do that for I, every highway, not just the yeah. Eagle one. <laughs> right. I know, I really, I mean, like, all we need is Bomber to buy more things. Yeah. But I, if anyone, if you are a, <laughs> if you are just please. a thing. <laughs> Where if you've gone to a Taylor Swift concert, if you've gone to a, a game. you know a Rams game, yeah. you know it's just like a nightmare. Sorry. It's brutal. Yeah. And there's no so there's it's one like, thing in and out. Ugh. So I feel like this is a good thing. I feel like Bomber understands like it's it's a commitment asking everybody to go there, uh, you know. But like let's let's do it. That is awesome. It's like the Dodger game. The Dodger. I love exactly. going to Dodger. I, I can't. No I won't out. do it. I'd rather just sit there and watch them on TV. Yep. Because getting oh, out is the worst I, I, in the whole I, world. I have, uh, yeah, I live kind of near the Dodgers, and it's like you feel that traffic. It just, it like, it just, it, I, I feel the energy of it just yes. on my house. Sucking mm -hmm. through the. I've it's never just finished a Dodgers game. No, no you no, either got to go can't. super early and leave early, or go late and leave early. But you can't yeah. leave early if you're it's not the World going Series. on time. Like, you ever. can't, like, no, you can't do that. Um, I'll right. tell you this: as a yeah. dad, it, what is makes it all the worse is uh, once you get in your car and your kids like, I have to go to the bathroom. Oh. That's the worst. Then you're like, oh, I don't know. I know we're gonna be in this car forever. Forever. They have to get out, go back in, go mm. bathroom, get back in. Shit your pants, Although a kids. lot of trips. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Chandler. I don't know if that's I didn't know what you could meant. curse on this. <laughs> now we're in a whole different interview. Ch Chandler has a special contract. Yeah, there's always that He's option. <laughs> to do whatever he wants. Um, the podcast, how did this get made? Yes. You talk about awful movies, but you also had Space Jam on there. I thought Space Jam was supposed to be a good movie. Was I wrong? Yes. What? Do I Space Jam is terrible. Right? Space Jam is terrible. <laughs> like it, it, culturally, it's great. Like they got great uniforms. Go buy those uniforms. But it's a it's a bad. I mean, look, I love MJ, the best. Not a great actor. Uh, I, we did that in Chicago, and we had to basically say to people in Chicago, like, face it, it's not. He's not, he's not good. This is not good. Bill Murray's funny in it, but I mean, you know, it's weird. It's a weird movie. So Watching you really don't like I, the new one with I, LeBron because that was yeah. hot garbage. Uh, let me tell you something. Don Cheadle, a uh, friend of mine, or my co-star on Black Monday. Uh, Space Jam 2, interesting movie. Interesting movie. That's a nice way to put it. I thought Space Jam was good. So I maybe it, maybe it's Space just like nostalgia. It gets our know. kid. Yeah. It's, if you watch it, I watch it tonight. Watch it again as an adult. We watch it tonight. That's we what we should do. We should watch it again as an adult. It's probably horrible. Yeah, that's it. that's what it is. Like it, it is fun because it's like, look, as a kid, like you want to watch like Michael Jordan in a movie. But if you oh. sat down and watched it, be like, Huh? God. What's going on? Man, Bugs Bunny. Now okay. we're gonna watch it. Yeah. Again. My, the, the, we got my favorite. My favorite joke of the whole movie is he is Michael Jordan in the movie, and he is living in like a two-bedroom house <laughs> in like Pasadena. <laughs> or like I'm like, what? Well, this you gotta at least show me that this is. Oh, <laughs> I don't funny. care that he's playing baseball. You know there was rumors in a that his, house. his kid was Eric Gordon in that movie. Do you ever hear that rumor? No. Oh good. yes, yes. <laughs> Really? I don't know if it was actually Jordan, it's, but they were saying uh, that kid playing him yeah. that was Eric Gordon. Okay, how do we not know that? This, I don't know. Never research it because it's better if we don't yeah. debunk yeah. it. Let's, Let's just stick it That's the theory of my life, Paul. I don't like to research anything. Just go with yeah. it. Just guess. I just learned something new. <laughs> the internet's I'm, I'm, I'm going down this rabbit hole. Yeah, no pun intended. Yeah, yeah, it, it looks just hole. like Eric Gordon. Makes sense. <laughs> Checks out. So, Paul, a few years ago, you shot a scene for uh, your movie, Daddy's Home, um, at oh, yeah. halftime of a Pelicans-Lakers game. Ooh. What was that experience like for you? Well, first of all, it was 
great and terrible because it was the first time that Kobe had agreed to uh, be in a movie. He said people have used him in movies all the time, but he never agreed to it. And that was the game that he re-injured himself. And that was like the beginning of the end of, oh. of Kobe. So that was like, I always live with this idea of like Kobe going like, I never agreed to do a movie. I'm excited to do this. It'd be fun. Immediately gets injured. Oh. And you feel like, oh, like I just, oh, no. I live with that. Like not guilt because it's not my movie, but it was like, it was a, it was a terrible moment. And he was so excited to do it. But for me, doing that scene in that Pelicans game was so much fun because no one knew what was going on. We didn't show that there was a movie being filmed. What? I think people thought that Will Ferrell was like a drunk guy at first. All the sports blogs started running with the story that Will Ferrell was ejected from a Pelicans game for being too drunk because he was supposed to hit a free throw. And then in the middle of his free throw, he like hit a, a cheerleader in the face with a basketball. <laughs> and we had to do all this kind of creative movement to get a real basketball out of my hands and put a fake one into his hands. And we did all this movement. And the first time when that basketball hit that cheerleader's face, you could hear like a pin drop. It was like, oh. no one knew what was going on. And then seeing Will get dragged out, people were confused. The second that's... time we did it, they caught on, but it was amazing. But still, that's crazy that you could even get that far without anyone figuring it out. That's, that's awesome. So yeah. LA. I, well, because you know what? Well, no, this is uh, New Orleans. Oh, it's in New Orleans. So yeah, was, you're right. Yeah. So I think what was so fun about it was like there was an energy to it, like where people aren't really paying attention to what's going on in the court during the game. And that's why then all of a sudden they all saw it. They all got shocked. It was great. More God, pranks of NBA games. That's so good. Uh, Paul, this has been a pleasure. Make sure you check out the podcast, How Did This Get Made? And pre-order the book, Joyful Recollections yes. of Trauma. Of trauma. Yes, Beautiful thank you so title. much. I got a book. <laughs> Thanks so, so much, everybody. Thank you so this much. We'll be back. We'll run it back in a minute. Run it up. Run it back. Well, we're officially halfway through the year, so it's mid-season award time. Mm -hmm. Guys, be the stars I know you can be. Go! First things first. <laughs> my MVP at the mid-season point. Y'all ready for this? Drum roll. Mm -hmm. Shea Gilgis oh. Alexander Ooh. from the OK Oklahoma City Thunder. 30, 30 point game so far. OKC is second in the West. He's the leader of that team. He's the best player of that team. 15 and seven against teams that are over 500. A lot of that is because of him. Right now, if he can keep this up, I got him as my, as my MVP pick. For rookie of the year, his running mate, his Scottie Pippen, give me Chet Holmgren. 17 points a game, top five in all statistical categories with the exception of assist. He's number six in assists, but he's playing at a high clip. A bunch of more mm. wins than, than Wimbiana, so I'm gonna give him my rookie of the year pick, Chandler. Sixth man of the year, you gotta give it to Malik Monk. Who's playing better than him off the bench, right? Other than my guy out in Minnesota, other than that, Malik Monk has been an absolute dog. I think this is gonna be a runaway award for me. So give me Malik Monk for the uh, for sixth man of the year, my bad. <clears throat> and for my top two teams, mm. I am going in the best in the East, give me Boston. They've been the most consistent, got the best opportunity, lost last year in the conference finals. I think they come back with a chip on their shoulders. Give me the Celtics. Last but not least, my surprise pick is gonna be the Los Angeles Clippers. Big time win last night, down 18 points. Big win, comeback, and I think that's what that's the point of this team being the best in the West. At any point, they got a bunch of talent, got guys that can fill in. When one of those guys not having it going, they can have somebody else. So give me the Clippers out of the West. I like Celtics, Clippers mm. in the championship, but OKC is gonna have a big, big year in the war season. That. I like it. I like it. We have a lot of similarities. Uh, starting with my MVP, Lou. I got Jason Tatum. Really? I think he's the best player on the best team in the NBA. We've been talking about it all season long. This team, it just feels like it's their year. They're primed. Jalen Brown's been having a big year stepping up. The addition of Drew Holiday defending. Uh, they're the most complete team. The lack of depth, you know, bothers me a little bit, but I think maybe if they make one or two moves, they have the best starting five in the NBA. I got them uh, and him as my MVP. Rookie of the year, I think pretty much uh, Everybody has this. It's Chet Holmgren. Me and Michelle always talk about it. it's not really fair with him not really being a rookie. It's the Blake Griffin it's situation cool. where he got a year of, of he got a year of training. He got a year mm -hmm. of practicing. Well, guy's been a pro since he was a Victor baby. has been a pro, but listen, he's arguably on one of the, the best teams in the NBA. He's their second best player. He's having a hell of a year, so he's gonna run away with this. Uh, I went with defensive player of the year instead of six man. I got Rudy Gobert. He's gonna be his fourth defensive player of the year, which is tied for the most 
all time. A lot of people were kind of all over him. This is arguably the worst trade of all time. He's really turned that around. He's been their most consistent player, dominating, averaging 13, 12, which is second in the NBA in rebounds, 2.1 blocks, 27 double doubles, which is also fifth in the NBA. So give me Rudy Gobert for the Defensive Player of the Year. And same as you, I went Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference. I think they're the best team. They've uh, currently a 20 and one at home. We all know how important that is. Uh, when the playoffs, playoffs start and the postseason comes, they are plus 9.7 in the point differential, which is the biggest in the NBA. So I like them. I said earlier, they're the best starting lineup. Some shooters coming off the bench. That is a weakness, but give me them in the East and West. Los Angeles Clippers. What? A lot up and down. People are going to do they make the trade for James Harden. They did, and it's working. They're flourishing. They're all playing very well. They uh, have a go-to guy, different every single night. They've won 10 of the last 12 games. They've only lost back-to-back -back games once. I like the Clippers being the best team in the West. We, I'm a little shocked that you both have the Clippers. I'm not shocked. <laughs> Lou's been pretty steadfast about it, but... Chandler, really? You know what? I was all over the Phoenix Suns. I was all over the Suns okay. earlier, and it hasn't really panned out to how I thought it would. So. And you think those are the only two teams? Oh, that makes sense. <clears throat> I think that's it. <clears throat> Thanks, Michelle. Yeah, no worries. Uh, we take a quick break. <laughs> we go back some more running back. I, what about all the other teams in the world? I mean, the Nuggets are solid. Lou was right. Lou was right. Chandler was right. Everyone was right. No. Thanks, Good work, guys. Run it back. Run it up. Take another look around the league. We haven't <laughs> talked enough about the Knicks. Um, since they got OG Ananobi, here's some fun. They're 9-2 and two since that trade. They won those games by an average of about 18 points. That's fun, Chandler. Why does it work so well? It, he's just a better fit than, than R.J. Barrett was. He gives this dynamic. He's, he's more of a versatile player. He helps tremendously defensively. And when you have a lot of mid-range offensive-minded guys like an R.J. Barrett, like a Julius Reynolds, their games are too similar to mesh well. So mm -hmm. when you put an OG in there, you plug him right in. He runs the floor. He cuts. He's on the offensive glass. He rebounds. He, he's just more of a versatile player. And doesn't make him necessarily much better of a player than R.J. Barrett. He just fits well with this system. Him. He fits better with RJ uh, with with uh, Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle, so I, I think it's great. He he's he gives that kind of two-way player feel that they needed, and clearly they, they you know they're nine and two since making the trade for him, and they're a real threat. It's crazy too. They're they're number one in offensive rebounding, number two in defensive rebounding. That is with Mitchell Robinson not playing right now, so it's kind of a crazy little set of stats right there. Um, and this was a big splash. This was the big trade that kind of kicked off a couple more after that. Can you expect, can we expect anything more as the trade deadline fastly approaches? I know we talked about this a couple weeks ago. I don't know if they have a more significant trade than an OG on an OB. Yeah. That might wait till the summer when you see the, the lands, trade landscape open up even more. But I think right now they're, they're more focused on guard help. They're focused on yeah. you lose Emmanuel quickly in your, in your, in your reserve rotation. You want to go find a playmaker potentially that can help you uh, out, out in that role, in that Emmanuel quickly role. The, um, the other side of the trade was Emmanuel Quickly, as you said. He had a, a lovely essay, basically, about leaving New York. He also had this to say about building chemistry with new teammates. Uh, it's like meeting a new girl. You got to take the time to get to know her. You got to take her out to eat, stuff like that. You ain't going to just walk up to her and say, let's get yeah. married. Um, uh, does, does I that think it sounds like so, he's in the market right no, now. No, it's like so very 90 day Does he like, like her or not? I, yeah. Well, that's it's philosophical. He doesn't know yet. Yeah, I don't. I didn't. I didn't understand this one. Maybe really. It, maybe it just didn't connect how he wanted to. It's, listen, where's the compliment? Well, the compliment yeah, this is seems like you more might of want to un, marry her. This seems like more of an unsure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, where's the compliment? Statement. It, he's like, uh, let's let's go. On is a there a few future? More dates, maybe. I don't know. I, I'm not. I I'm not sure about this. I will I say. Like I, I mean, I get what he's trying to say. It's not easy to get. Well, you'll I don't, just run in there. And be it's like, not hey, easy to get know. thrown into this. It's not easy to get thrown into this new relationship. And you can see it's taking time. Look in Milwaukee with Dame. Look at the big three in Phoenix. That they're they're. And he wasn't happy know, to leave. Even in all of those scenarios that you just mentioned there has been a statement of some type of excitement. I don't see any excitement yeah, he he could, uh, about he, this young lady. First of all, <laughs> he's about, a, he's a, about the future, <laughs> about this nice Canadian woman. He's going moment. on the date in the first place, so that's that's something. Oh, right? he's there. Okay, yeah, he's there. He, he didn't necessarily, it was sort of like a fix-up. They weren't, he didn't want to okay, go. Okay, blind date. And now he's trying to figure all out right, if he likes all her. All right, see, now we're making it. He was decisions. caught off guard. He, yeah. I mean, he didn't see it coming. He kind of liked what he had going on with this other chick. And, Could be you know, a future yeah, there. If you're going to be a restricted free agent, don't you uh, want to 
want to be talking about. You I this. would you be ready. saying, you oh, love talk, yeah, if you're going to meet my parents now. I got my got passport. <laughs> yeah, I'm here to some, stay. You want to say some kind. I'm spending Christmas there. I don't know. I like the honesty. I kind of love the honesty. I'm not going to lie. Uh, there, was a, there was a streak over the weekend, 45 consecutive seasons with less than 50 wins. Congratulations, Wizards. Mm. Okay. That's that's the worst thing I've ever heard. Here we go, is, uh, <laughs> Let's go. Buckle what do we, up, guys. What do we do with this? I mean, they stink. They stink in every aspect. They got lucky with drafting John Wall and Good Brad God. Beal. It's and then besides that, those two draft picks, it's tough because they're never going to get a real free agent. It's it's hard. It's hard to kind of develop this team. You have to build through the draft. You have to build via trade. They don't really have assets. Players want. I do. I, I like Kyle Kuzma's game. I think he's a versatile scorer that can shoot the ball said in the commercial break, I'd love to see him somehow get to Sacramento. I think he could fit with Sabonis and Fox, but you got Jordan Poole now locked in for contra under contract. And, and like I said, their, their draft picks outside of John Wall and Bradley Beal, oh, Lord. not very good. So it's a team that has to build and get good through the draft when they're drafting shitty. It's hard to do. 45 can I'm just saying it over and over. I'm, I'm 48. Like that is Brutal. I don't even know how you get up in the morning as a fan and decide to cheer for this team again. Um, what do you do? Just you'd say rip it up, but I feel like Fire you've done sale. that. Do it again. Do it again. Rip it up again. <laughs> Shred it. Do it again. Listen, this is a this is a team that we said I, well I yep. had them pegged as a playoff team. I That's thought true, you did. with the season that Jordan Poole had last year and coming to the Wizards, I felt like he was going to come into his own and, and and flourish. And that just hadn't been the case. You know, a lot of young talent on this team. It hasn't translated into a lot of success or wins. And so, it just looks bad. It feels bad. Blow it up. I, I hate to do this to you. Is anyone on this team untouchable? The reality is, there's one player that is off the table for the Wizards, and that's their <laughs> top pick in last year's draft, Bilal Koulibaly. That's okay. the reality of it. That's the one player that is not on the table, but Kyle Kuzma, Tyus Jones, they're going to get calls for both of them at this trade deadline. Tyus Jones, I think, would be a great addition somewhere. For any team. I mean, any yeah. team that needs a point guard. And again, there's valuable players on this team that just this this collection of guys on this team is not going to win. But they have like I, I would take Daniel Gafford, like a, like a, a big guy like that to uh, you know like that. I, I just I'm so this is so unattractive. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the it's the aesthetic of this team. You it's know, really just, even though the Spurs are worse. Even Settle though, down. Uh, you don't have to Detroit. throw that. I'm, I'm, I was going to keep it's, moving. Just, it's, Michelle, it's just personal. It's Spurs, Detroit. Charlotte. But when it comes to this team, they lead the league in blooper reels. It's just tough, That's too, true. when you're bad <laughs> and true. there's no like future either. You guys can be bad this year because you know the future is Thank bright. You. you have this freak. And How about that picture of Wemby dunking on Marvin Bag or what, 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 whatever that was over Marvin Bag? Did we see that? It doesn't make sense over, half the over pictures. The and by the way, we're going to get into this Rookie of the Year thing as we get closer and closer. Because oh, it's yes, not Rookie no, of the Year. Year on the best team, no, it's rookie of the year. I, He's I the agree, best. If you're, if you're gonna, in no form, fashion, in any category, can you win an award for being last for nothing? Yeah. Right, is but it, if you're if you're better than anything. Chet, you should be. Doesn't the Wemby? Uh, listen, I, I think it's up for debate. Doesn't Wemby have better stats across yes. the board than Chet? If you're I'm a great, just saying. What a good place to end the show. Chet is the rookie of the year, and Chet's an All Star. I'm trying to give Michelle some support over here. We'll be back. I think he's an all-star. Running back, running up.